The Very Large Telescope VLT is a telescope facility operated by the European Southern Observatory on Cerro Paranal in the Atacama Desert of northern Chile. The VLT consists of four individual telescopes, each with a primary mirror 8.2 meters across, which are generally used separately but can be used together to achieve very high angular resolution. The four separate optical telescopes are known as Antu, Kuayan, Melipal, and Yepan, which are all words for astronomical objects in the Mapuche language. The telescopes form an array which is complemented by four movable auxiliary telescopes ATs of 1.8 meters aperture. The VLT operates at visible and infrared wavelengths. Each individual telescope can detect objects roughly 4 billion times fainter than can be detected with the naked eye, and when all the telescopes are combined, the facility can achieve an angular resolution of about 0.002 arc second. In single telescope mode of operation angular resolution is about 0.05 arc second. The VLT is the most productive ground-based facility for astronomy with only the Hubble Space Telescope generating more scientific papers among facilities operating at visible wavelengths. Among the pioneering observations carried out using the VLT are the first direct image of an exoplanet, the tracking of individual stars moving around the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, and observations of the afterglow of the furthest known gamma ray burst. <laughs> General information The VLT consists of an arrangement of four large meters diameter telescopes called unit telescopes or UTS with optical elements that can combine them into an astronomical interferometer VLTI, which is used to resolve small objects. The interferometer also includes a set of four 1.8-meter diameter movable telescopes dedicated to interferometric observations. The first of the UTS started operating in May 1998 and was offered to the astronomical community on 1 April 1999. The other telescopes became operational in 1999 and 2000, enabling multi-telescope VLT capability. Four 1.8 m auxiliary telescopes ATs have been added to the VLTI to make it available when the UTS are being used for other projects. These ATs were installed and became operational between 2004 and 2007. The VLT's 8.2 meter telescopes were originally designed to operate in three modes. As a set of four independent telescopes, this is the primary mode of operation. As a single large coherent interferometric instrument, the VLT interferometer or VLTI for extra resolution. This mode is occasionally used only for observations of relatively bright sources with small angular extent as a single large incoherent instrument, for extra light gathering capacity. The instrumentation required to obtain a combined incoherent focus was not built. In 2009, new instrumentation proposals were put forward to potentially make that observing mode available. Multiple telescopes are sometimes independently pointed at the same object, either to increase the total light gathering power or to provide simultaneous observations with complementary instruments. Topic. Unit telescopes The UTS are equipped with a large set of instruments permitting observations to be performed from the near ultraviolet to the mid infrared, i.e., a large fraction of the light wavelengths accessible from the surface of the Earth, with the full range of techniques including high resolution spectroscopy, multi object spectroscopy, imaging, and high resolution imaging. In particular, the VLT has several adaptive optics systems, which correct for the effects of atmospheric turbulence, providing images almost as sharp as if the telescope were in space. In the near infrared, the adaptive optics images of the VLT are up to three times sharper than those of the Hubble Space Telescope, and the spectroscopic resolution is many times better than Hubble. The VLTs are noted for their high level of observing efficiency and automation. The 8.2 m diameter telescopes are housed in compact, thermally controlled buildings, which rotate synchronously with the telescopes. This design minimizes any adverse effects on the observing conditions, for instance from air turbulence in the telescope tube, which might otherwise occur due to variations in the temperature and wind flow. The principal role of the main VLT telescopes is to operate as four independent telescopes. The interferometry combining light from multiple telescopes is used about 20% of the time for very high resolution on bright objects, for example, on Betelgeuse. This mode allows astronomers to see details up to 25 times finer than with the individual telescopes. 
The light beams are combined in the VLTI using a complex system of mirrors in underground tunnels where the light paths must be kept equal within differences of less than one one thousandth of a millimeter over a light path of a hundred meters. With this kind of precision the VLTI can reconstruct images with an angular resolution of milliseconds. <laughs> Mapuche names for the unit telescopes It had long been ESO's intention to provide real names to the four VLT unit telescopes, to replace the original technical designations of UT1 to UT4. In March 1999, at the time of the Paranal inauguration, four meaningful names of objects in the sky in the Mapuche language were chosen. This indigenous people lives mostly south of Santiago de Chile. An essay contest was arranged in this connection among schoolchildren of the Chilean II region of which Antofagasta is the capital to write about the implications of these names. It drew many entries dealing with the cultural heritage of ESO's host country. The winning essay was submitted by 17-year-old Jorce Albanez Castilla from Chukwikamata near the city of Calama. She received the prize, an amateur telescope, during the inauguration of the Paranal site. Unit telescopes 1 to 4 are since known as Antu, Sun, Kuayan, Moon, Melipal, Southern Cross, and Yepan, Evening Star, respectively. Originally, there was some confusion as to whether Yepan actually stands for the Evening Star Venus, because a Spanish Mapuche dictionary from the 1940s wrongly translated Yepan as Sirius. Topic. Auxiliary telescopes Although the four 8.2 m unit telescopes can be combined in the VLTI, their observation time is spent mostly on individual observations, and are used for interferometric observations for a limited number of nights every year. However, the four smaller 1.8 m ATs are available and dedicated to interferometry to allow the VLTI to operate every night. The top part of each IT is a round enclosure, made from two sets of three segments, which open and close. Its job is to protect the delicate 1.8 m telescope from the desert conditions. The enclosure is supported by the boxy transporter section, which also contains electronics cabinets, liquid cooling systems, air conditioning units, power supplies, and more. During astronomical observations the enclosure and transporter are mechanically isolated from the telescope, to ensure that no vibrations compromise the data collected. The transporter section runs on tracks, so the ATs can be moved to 30 different observing locations. As the VLTI acts rather like a single telescope as large as the group of telescopes combined, changing the positions of the ATs means that the VLTI can be adjusted according to the needs of the observing project. The reconfigurable nature of the VLTI is similar to that of the very large array. Topic: <inaudible> Scientific results. Results from the VLT have led to the publication of an average of more than one peer-reviewed scientific paper per day. For instance, in 2017, over 600 refereed scientific papers were published based on VLT data. The telescope's scientific discoveries include direct imaging of Beta Pictoris b, the first extrasolar planet so imaged, tracking individual stars moving around the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, and observing the afterglow of the furthest known gamma ray burst. In 2018, the VLT helped to perform the first successful test of Einstein's general relativity on the motion of a star passing through the extreme gravitational field near the supermassive black hole, that is the gravitational redshift. In fact, the observation has been conducted for over 26 years with the SINFONI and NACO adaptive optics instruments in the VLT while the new approach in 2018 also used the beam combiner instrument Gravity. The Galactic Center team at the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics MPE had used the observation revealed the effects for the first time. Other discoveries with VLT's signature include the detection of carbon monoxide molecules in a galaxy located almost 11 billion light years away for the first time, a feat that had remained elusive for 25 years. This has allowed astronomers to obtain the most precise measurement of the cosmic temperature at such a remote epoch. Another important study was that of the violent flares from the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. The VLT and Apex teamed up to reveal material being stretched out as it orbits in the intense gravity close to the central black hole. Using the VLT, astronomers have also measured the age of the oldest star known in our galaxy, the Milky Way. 
At 13.2 billion years old, the star was born in the earliest era of star formation in the universe. They have also analyzed the atmosphere around a super-Earth exoplanet for the first time using the VLT. The planet, which is known as GJ1214b, was studied as it passed in front of its parent star and some of the starlight passed through the planet's atmosphere. In all, of the top ten discoveries done at ESO's observatories, seven made use of the VLT. Topic: Technical details. Topic: Telescopes. Each UT telescope is a Ritchie Chrétien Cassegrain telescope with a 22-ton 8.2 m zeroed a primary mirror of 14.4 m focal length and a 1.1 m lightweight beryllium secondary mirror. A flat tertiary mirror diverts the light to one of two instruments at the f. 15 Naismith foci on either side, with a system focal length of 120 m, or tilts aside to allow light through the primary mirror central hole to a third instrument at the Cassegrain focus. Additional mirrors can send the light via tunnels to the central VLTI beam combiners. The maximum field of view at Naismith foci is around 27 arc minutes diameter, slightly smaller than the full moon. Though most instruments view a narrower field, each telescope has an alt azimuth mount with total mass around 350 tons, and uses active optics with 150 supports on the back of the primary mirror to control the shape of the thin 177 mm thick mirror by computers. Topic. Instruments The VLT instrumentation program is the most ambitious program ever conceived for a single observatory. It includes large field images, adaptive optics corrected cameras and spectrographs, as well as high resolution and multi object spectrographs and covers a broad spectral region, from deep ultraviolet 300 nanometers to mid infrared 24 micrometers wavelengths. Amber the astronomical multi-beam recombiner instrument combines three telescopes of the VLT at the same time, dispersing the light in a spectrograph to analyze the composition and shape of the observed object. AMBER is notably the most productive interferometric instrument ever. CRIRES The cryogenic infrared Eschel spectrograph is an adaptive optics-assisted Eschel spectrograph. It provides a resolving power of up to 100,000 in the infrared spectral range from 1 to 5 micrometers. It is currently undergoing a major upgrade to CRIRES Plus to provide 10x larger simultaneous wavelength coverage. Espresso Eschel spectrograph for rocky exoplanet and stable spectroscopic observations is a high-resolution, fiber-fed and cross-dispersed Eschel spectrograph for the visible wavelength range, capable of operating in one UT mode, using one of the four telescopes and in four UT mode, using all four, for the search for rocky extrasolar planets in the habitable zone of their host stars. Its main feature is the spectroscopic stability and the radial velocity precision. The requirement is to reach 10 cm per second, but the aimed goal is to obtain a precision level of few cm per second. Installation and commissioning of Espresso at the VLT is foreseen in 2017. Flames Fiber Large Array Multi-Element Spectrograph is a multi-object fiber feed unit for UVES and Giraffe, the latter allowing the capability for simultaneously studying hundreds of individual stars in nearby galaxies at moderate spectral resolution in the visible. FORS-1, FORS-2 Focal reducer and low dispersion spectrograph is a visible light camera and multi-object spectrograph with a 6.8 arc minute field of view. FORS-2 is an upgraded version over FORS-1 and includes further multi-object spectroscopy capabilities. FORS-1 was retired in 2009 to make space for X-Shooter, FORS-2 continues to operate as of 2015. Gravity VLTI is an adaptive optics assisted near infrared near instrument for micro arc second precision narrow angle astrometry and interferometric phase referenced imaging of faint celestial objects expected commissioning will be in 2016 this instrument will interferometrically combine near light collected by four telescopes at the VLTI Hawkeye the high acuity wide field K band imager is a near infrared imager with a relatively large field of view about 8 by 8 arc minutes Isaac 
the infrared spectrometer and array camera was a near infrared imager and spectrograph. It operated successfully from 2000 to 2013 and was then retired to make way for Sphere, since most of its capabilities can now be delivered by the newer Hawkeye or KMOS. KMOS is a cryogenic near infrared multi object spectrometer, observing 24 objects simultaneously, intended primarily for the study of distant galaxies. Matisse VLTI. The Multi Aperture Mid Infrared Spectroscopic Experiment is an infrared spectro interferometer of the VLT interferometer, which potentially combines the beams of all four unit telescopes and four auxiliary telescopes. The instrument is used for image reconstruction. After 12 years of development, it saw its first light at the telescope in Paranal in March 2018. MIDI VLTI an instrument combining two telescopes of the VLT in the mid infrared, dispersing the light in a spectrograph to analyze the dust composition and shape of the observed object. MIDI is notably the second most productive interferometric instrument ever, surpassed by AMBER recently. MIDI was retired in March 2015 to prepare the VLTI for the arrival of Gravity and Matisse. MUSE is a huge, three dimensional spectroscopic explorer which will provide complete visible spectra of all objects contained in pencil beams through the universe. NACO NAOS Konica, NAOS meaning Naismith Adaptive Optics System and Konica, meaning CUD near infrared camera, is an adaptive optics facility which produces infrared images as sharp as if taken in space and includes spectroscopic, polarimetric and coronagraphic capabilities. PIONIER VLTI is an instrument to combine the light of all 8-meter telescopes, allowing to pick up details about 16 times finer than can be seen with one UT. SINFONI the spectrograph for integral field observations in the near infrared is a medium resolution near infrared 1 to 2.5 micrometers integral field spectrograph fed by an adaptive optics module. Sphere The spectropolarimetric high contrast exoplanet research, a high contrast adaptive optics system dedicated to the discovery and study of exoplanets. ULTRACAM is a visitor instrument. UVES the ultraviolet and visual Eschel spectrograph is a high-resolution ultraviolet and visible light Eschel spectrograph. VIMOS The visible multi-object spectrograph delivers visible images and spectra of up to 1,000 galaxies at a time in a 14 by 14 arc min field of view. Vinci Was a test instrument combining two telescopes of the VLT. It was the first light instrument of the VLTI and is not longer in use. VISIR The VLT spectrometer and imager for the mid-infrared provides diffraction-limited imaging and spectroscopy at a range of resolutions in the 10 and 20 micrometers mid-infrared atmospheric windows. X-Shooter is the first second-generation instrument, a very wide-band, UV to near-infrared single-object spectrometer designed to explore the properties of rare, unusual or unidentified sources. Topic. Interferometry In its interferometric operating mode, the light from the telescopes is reflected off mirrors and directed through tunnels to a central beam combining laboratory. In the year 2001, during commissioning, the VLTI successfully measured the angular diameters of four red dwarfs including Proxima Centauri. During this operation it achieved an angular resolution of plus or minus 0.08 milliarc seconds 0.388 nanoradians. This is comparable to the resolution achieved using other arrays such as the Navy Prototype Optical Interferometer and the Chara Array. Unlike many earlier optical and infrared interferometers, the Astronomical Multi-Beam Recombiner instrument on VLTI was initially designed to perform coherent integration which requires signal-to-noise greater than one in each atmospheric coherence time. Using the big telescopes and coherent integration, the faintest object the VLTI can observe is magnitude 7 in the near-infrared for broadband observations, similar to many other near-infrared, optical interferometers without fringe tracking. In 2011, an incoherent integration mode was introduced called AMBER blind mode, which is more similar to the observation mode used at earlier interferometer arrays such as COAST, IOTA and CHARA. In this blind mode, AMBER can observe sources as faint as K equals 10 in medium spectral resolution. 
At more challenging mid-infrared wavelengths, the VLTI can reach magnitude 4.5, significantly fainter than the infrared spatial interferometer. When fringe tracking is introduced, the limiting magnitude of the VLTI is expected to improve by a factor of almost 1,000, reaching a magnitude of about 14. This is similar to what is expected for other fringe tracking interferometers. In spectroscopic mode, the VLTI can currently reach a magnitude of 1.5. The VLTI can work in a fully integrated way, so that interferometric observations are actually quite simple to prepare and execute. The VLTI has become worldwide the first general user optical, infrared interferometric facility offered with this kind of service to the astronomical community. Because of the many mirrors involved in the optical train, about 95% of the light is lost before reaching the instruments at a wavelength of 1 micrometer, 90% at 2 micrometers and 75% at 10 micrometers. This refers to reflection off 32 surfaces including the coup day train, the star separator, the main delay line, beam compressor and feeding optics. Additionally, the interferometric technique is such that it is very efficient only for objects that are small enough that all their light is concentrated. For instance, an object with a relatively low surface brightness such as the moon cannot be observed, because its light is too diluted. Only targets which are at temperatures of more than 1000 degrees Celsius have a surface brightness high enough to be observed in the mid-infrared, and objects must be at several thousands of degrees Celsius for near-infrared observations using the VLTI. This includes most of the stars in the solar neighborhood and many extragalactic objects such as bright active galactic nuclei, but this sensitivity limit rules out interferometric observations of most solar system objects. Although the use of large telescope diameters and adaptive optics correction can improve the sensitivity, this cannot extend the reach of optical interferometry beyond nearby stars and the brightest active galactic nuclei. Because the unit telescopes are used most of the time independently, they are used in the interferometric mode mostly during bright time that is, close to full moon. At other times, interferometry is done using 1.8-meter auxiliary telescopes ATs, which are dedicated to full-time interferometric measurements. The first observations using a pair of ATs were conducted in February 2005, and all the four ATs have now been commissioned. For interferometric observations on the brightest objects, there is little benefit in using 8-meter telescopes rather than 1.8-meter telescopes. The first two instruments at the VLTI were Vinci, a test instrument used to set up the system, now decommissioned, and MIDI, which only allow two telescopes to be used at any one time. With the installation of the three telescope amber closure phase instrument in 2005, the first imaging observations from the VLTI are expected soon. Deployment of the phase referenced imaging and microarc second astrometry Prima instrument started 2008 with the aim to allow phase referenced measurements in either an astrometric two beam mode or as a fringe tracker successor to Vinci, operated concurrent with one of the other instruments. After falling drastically behind schedule and failing to meet some specifications, in December 2004 the VLT interferometer became the target of a second ESO recovery plan. This involves additional effort concentrated on improvements to fringe tracking and the performance of the main delay lines. Note that this only applies to the interferometer and not other instruments on Paranel. In 2005, the VLTI was routinely producing observations, although with a brighter limiting magnitude and poorer observing efficiency than expected. As of March 2008, the VLTI had already led to the publication of 89 peer-reviewed publications and had published a first-ever image of the inner structure of the mysterious Eta Carini. In March 2011, the PIONIER instrument for the first time simultaneously combined the light of the four-unit telescopes, potentially making VLTI the biggest optical telescope in the world. However, this attempt was not really a success. The first successful attempt was in February 2012, with four telescopes combined into a 130-meter diameter mirror. In popular culture One of the large mirrors of the telescopes was the subject of an episode of the National Geographic Channel's reality series World's Toughest Fixes, where a crew of engineers removed and transported the mirror to be cleaned and recoated with aluminium. The job required battling strong winds, fixing a broken pump in a giant washing machine and resolving a rigging issue. The area surrounding the very large telescope has also been featured in a blockbuster movie. 
The ESO Hotel The Residencia is an award-winning building, and served as a backdrop for part of the James Bond movie Quantum of Solace. The movie producer, Michael G. Wilson, said, The Residencia of Paranal Observatory caught the attention of our director, Mark Forster and production designer, Dennis Gassner, both for its exceptional design and its remote location in the Atacama Desert. It is a true oasis and the perfect hideout for Dominic Green, our villain, whom 007 is tracking in our new James Bond film. Topic Gallery equals equals see also